Welcome to the deep dive, your shortcut to being truly well informed. Today, we're plunging into a topic that, well, it cuts right to the heart of our digital lives, the internet itself. Mm -hmm. For too long, we've watched this incredible global network become increasingly concentrated, right? Absolutely. You've got a handful of powerful tech giants, even government institutions, holding immense sway over our online experience. And that centralization, it leads to real concerns. Yeah, things like data exploitation, censorship, and just a frustrating lack of transparency sometimes. Exactly. But there's this uh, compelling counter-narrative emerging. Built on decentralization. Precisely. And that brings us to our focus today. The Internet Computer Protocol, ICP. ICP, okay. Yeah, and its vision is nothing short of audacious. It aims to fundamentally disrupt that centralized status quo. How so? By reimagining the Internet, yeah. essentially transforming it into a kind of decentralized public utility. The core idea is to extend the Internet's capability. To run code directly on it. Exactly. Allowing smart contracts and dApps to run at web speed, at scale, directly on the Internet itself, all powered by blockchain. Okay, so for this deep dive, our mission is clear. We're distilling the most important insights from the sources you've shared with us. We'll explore the... Um, the big promises ICP has made. The grand vision. Right, but also the significant hurdles it's faced. It hasn't all been smooth sailing. Good going on. And crucially, how it truly measures up against you know the current blockchain giant, Ethereum. A key comparison. So by the end of this conversation, you'll walk away with a nuanced understanding, the potential, the pitfalls, ready for any discussion about the future of the web. Sounds good. Let's start with the basics then. What exactly is the Internet Computer Protocol? Oh, no, lay it out for us. Okay. At its core, ICP is a decentralized computing platform. It's stewarded by the Definity Foundation, which is a Swiss nonprofit. Okay. And its fundamental goal is really to empower developers to build and run software directly on the Internet. Directly on the Internet, so completely bypassing traditional cloud providers. Exactly. No need for centralized servers, no AWS, no Azure. Imagine the Internet itself becoming the infrastructure. Wow, that is a huge claim. I remember Definity's founder, Dominic Williams, positioned ICP as like the next major leap in the blockchain timeline. He did. The thinking goes. Bitcoin gave us decentralized currency. Right, the first step. Ethereum brought smart contracts, programmable money. Step two. And ICP aims to be that third pivotal step. A limitless blockchain, as they call it, operating at true internet scale. So if it delivers, this isn't just another update. It's a potential foundational shift for how the web works. That's the ambition. And this foundational shift, it comes with some truly bold promises. Okay, like what? Well, first, uh, web speed performance. The idea is that decentralized apps could, in theory, run just as fast as the traditional web apps we use every day. Really? As fast as, say, Google Docs or something? That's the target. Second, unlimited scalability. Applications built on ICP should be able to grow, add users, add data without hitting performance walls. Hmm. Infinite scale. That's a big promise in blockchain. It is. Third, by cutting out that centralized cloud infrastructure, it aims for significantly lower operational costs for developers. Okay. Cheaper to run things. And finally, the big one. End-to-end -end decentralization. The entire application hosting data processing managed by the protocol, serving web pages directly to users, no intermediaries. So if this vision plays out, we're not just talking crypto coins here. Not at all. We're talking entire web services, social media, maybe even AI models, all running completely on chain. That's the potential. Mm. Governed by code and community, not corporations. It's a really compelling alternative vision. Okay, so how does it actually do all that? What's the tech underneath? Right. To achieve that, ICP relies on a pretty unique architecture. Let's start with what they call canisters. Canisters. Okay, like containers. Sort of. But think of them as a highly advanced evolution of smart contracts. They're stateful. Stateful, meaning they hold data. Exactly. Canisters combine both the program logic, the code, and its persistent state, its data. This makes them more like secure, decentralized microservices living right on the blockchain. Okay, so they can do complex stuff and store data, unlike basic smart contracts? Precisely. They can handle complex computations and store large amounts of data efficiently. Got it. 
So if canisters are these powerful units, how does ICP connect them all to get that unlimited scalability you mentioned? Is that where subnets come in? You got it. The network itself is structured into these subnets. Okay. Think of them as essentially standalone blockchains, but they work together, collectively forming the larger ICP network. Ah, like sharding. Similar concept, but implemented differently. Right. It allows for horizontal scaling. You add more nodes, you create more subnets, and the workload gets distributed dynamically across them. Right, so you can handle more transactions, more computation by just adding more machines to the network. Exactly. That's how it aims for massive throughput. It's a different scaling approach compared to many other blockchains. And what holds all these subnets and canisters together? I read about something called chain key cryptography. Yes, chain key cryptography is fundamental. It's a whole set of advanced cryptographic protocols that basically orchestrates all the nodes across all the subnets. What's the breakthrough there? It is pretty major. It effectively gives the entire internet computer network a single public key. One key for everything. How does that work? It's complex, but the result is critical for low latency, high performance, and robustness. It provides cryptographically guaranteed finality for transactions almost instantly. Okay, so for me as a user, that means things are fast mm. and secure. Extremely fast interactions, yeah. Without the typical blockchain confirmation delays you see elsewhere, and very secure. That speed and security sound like a big advantage. How does that tech translate into like actual features I might use? You mentioned internet identity. Internet identity is a perfect example. It uses that underlying chain key tech to offer passwordless, non-trackable web authentication. Passwordless. You authenticate using devices you already own, like your phone's fingerprint sensor or a hardware security key, like a YubiKey. No passwords, no usernames controlled by big tech. So no more Google or Facebook login buttons controlling my identity. That's the idea. You, the user, maintain control over your data and identity. It's a direct answer to Web2 privacy concerns. Okay, that sounds genuinely useful. And who governs all this? How are decisions made? That's where the Network Nervous System, or NNS, comes in. The NNS. Sounds like the brain. That's exactly what they call it. It's ICP's Decentralized Autonomous Organization, the DAO. It manages everything. How? Through voting? Yes. Holders of the ICP utility token stake them to create neurons. Neurons, like brain cells. Kind of a clever name, right? These neurons give you voting power on proposals that define the network's future economic changes, technical upgrades, everything. And I heard it upgrades really fast. That's its unique superpower. The NNS can autonomously upgrade the entire network protocol on a weekly basis based on those votes. Weekly? Wow. Most blockchains take months or need hard forks for major upgrades. Exactly. It's designed for rapid, seamless evolution, all managed decentrally. Okay, so the tech sounds impressive, visionary even, but the ICP story... It's not just about ambition, is it? There was that huge launch hype, then a massive crash. Oh, yeah. The trajectory has been, well, dramatic. When it launched in May 2021, the hype was immense. I remember headlines everywhere, internet disruptor. Its token, ICP, immediately listed on major exchanges and rocketed into the top 10 cryptocurrencies by market cap. And it had serious backing, right? Huge backing. Yeah. Over $166 million raised from top VCs like Andreessen Horowitz, Polychain Capital. The vision was clear. Disrupt cloud computing, build Web3. But then, what happened? The price just tanked. It really did. A shocking collapse. The ICB token's value plummeted by over 98% from its peak. Market cap went from, what, $9.5 billion down to around $1 billion relatively quickly. 98%? Why? What went wrong? Well, several factors were cited. A big one was a perceived lack of transparency especially around developer activity. Meaning people couldn't see what was actually being built. Exactly. Unlike, say, Ethereum, where you can easily track projects on Etherscan or DeFi Llama, it was much harder to get a clear picture of the ICP ecosystem early on. How many active apps? How many users? This opacity created suspicion. Like a ghost chain narrative. The narrative definitely took hold for a while. It made it hard for investors and developers to gauge real traction, which eroded confidence. And did that affect the actual applications being built? It seems so. There were criticisms about the user experience of some early dApps. For example, OpenChat, the messaging app, reportedly had complex signups and even temporarily stopped onboarding new users. Not ideal for growth. Not at all. And DSCVR, meant to be like a decentralized Reddit or LinkedIn, apparently struggled to attract meaningful content and engagement initially. These things created friction for user adoption. So groundbreaking tech but maybe the ecosystem and user experience weren't quite ready for prime time at launch. 
That's one interpretation. There's certainly still activity on the network now, developers building things. But the question lingers. Does that activity justify the valuation, given the fall? Right. And what are the key lessons here? The sources really emphasize that tech alone isn't enough. Visible progress, developer support, and user friendliness are critical. That transparency gap, especially compared to other chains, seemed to be a major hurdle. A painful lesson in managing hype and demonstrating real-world value quickly. Definitely. Now, this naturally leads us to that big comparison, ICP versus Ethereum. The established king versus the ambitious challenger. Right. Both aim to power the next generation of dApps, maybe even integrate the fragmented blockchain world, but they go about it so differently. And the performance numbers you see thrown around are just miles apart. They really are stark. Let's break some down. Block time. Ethereum, after the merge, averages around 12 seconds. ICP, under one second, like 0.936 seconds. Wow, nearly instant. What about costs? Gas fees on Ethereum can be notorious. Yeah, average transaction cost on Ethereum, around $2.39 lately, fluctuates a lot, ICP. It's minuscule, like 0.000022, practically free for the user. Okay, that's a different world. And storage, storing data on Ethereum is famously expensive. Astronomical. Storing just one gigabyte for a year on Ethereum costs. Estimates vary, but figures like $15 million are often cited. $15 million. Yeah. On ICP, that same gigabyte for a year. About $5. $5 versus $15 million. Okay. That explains why you can't store much data directly on Ethereum L1. Exactly. And then performance, raw computation. ICP uses this metric, MIEPs, millions of instructions per epoch. Right, measuring computation. They claim around 20,000 MIEPs, which translates to something like 5,382 transactions per second capacity. Ethereum's max throughput is maybe 1.25 MIEPs, around 11 transactions per second on the base layer. So orders of magnitude difference in speed, cost, storage, and throughput, at least based on these specs. It points to those fundamental architectural differences we talked about. Right, Ethereum deploying smart contracts on single nodes, even with proof of stake. While ICP uses those canisters running in parallel across many subnets orchestrated by chain key cryptography, it's built for horizontal scaling from the ground up. Which brings up that debate. Is ICP trying to be an ETH killer? Well, some people certainly frame it that way. But interestingly, the Definity Foundation itself often positions ICP more as an enhancer for Ethereum and even Bitcoin. An enhancer. Through direct bridgeless integration, ICP canisters, using tech like Threshold ECDSA signatures, can apparently hold keys and directly sign transactions on other blockchains like Ethereum or Bitcoin. Without needing those often vulnerable bridges. That's the claim. Yeah. So an ICP dApp could, for example, manage assets or trigger actions on Ethereum natively. It's designed to complement, leveraging ICP speed and low cost for computation while interacting with established chains. That's a really interesting angle. Complement, not just compete. Yeah, and it also ties into critiques of Ethereum's user experience. Yeah. We mentioned the gas fees. Which can be a huge barrier for average users. Right. Plus, many Ethereum dApps still rely heavily on centralized cloud services like AWS for their front ends and data storage which kind of undermines the whole decentralization promise, doesn't it? It does raise questions. So how does ICP handle user fees? It uses a reverse gas model. Developers prepay for computation by loading their canisters with cycles, which are derived from ICP tokens. So the users, they don't pay. Users generally don't pay gas fees to interact with dApps. It feels more like using a normal website. Much smoother UX. That sounds much more like Web2 usability. Huge difference. It's a key design choice aimed at mass adoption. So looking at it from an investment angle, Ethereum is the blue ship, right? Mm -hmm. Established, massive ecosystem, network effects. Definitely more mature, less volatile, perhaps, though still crypto. Whereas ICP, yeah. it's new and you had that rough start, higher risk. Higher uncertainty, for sure. But also, if the tech delivers on its potential and overcomes those early hurdles, the upside could be much larger. Classic risk-reward scenario. Right. High risk, potentially high reward for early believers in the tech. Exactly. Now let's talk about what people are actually building with this tech. What are the real world applications emerging? Yeah, beyond the theory, what can it do today? Well, ICP's unique ability to host entire web services, front end and back end, directly on chain, makes it function like a decentralized public serverless cloud. A serverless cloud run by a blockchain. Pretty much. And this enables some really cutting edge stuff, like running AI models directly inside tamper-proof smart contracts, uh, canisters. AI on the blockchain, how does that work? It means AI inference or even training could potentially run in a way that's verifiable and transparent, 
which is a big deal for trust in AI applications. Okay, that's fascinating. What about more common web applications, social media? That's actually one of the most active areas. You have platforms like OpenChat. The messaging app you mentioned earlier. Yeah, aiming to be a fully on-chain decentralized instant messenger. Then there's DSCVR. The Reddit LinkedIn style one? Right, a decentralized social content platform where users own the platform and the content. And also District, which is more like a Web3 professional network, blending Twitter and LinkedIn features. And these are live, people are using them. They are. Reports mention these platforms combined have attracted over 300,000 users. It shows there's real interest in decentralized social media alternatives, where users have data ownership, censorship resistance. And community governance through DAOs, presumably. Exactly. It's early days, but it's tangible proof of concept. Are there other areas beyond social media? Oh, yeah. DeFi is another focus. Exchanges, lending, stable coins benefiting from the speed and low fees, on-chain gaming is being explored, enterprise IT applications that need that tamper-proof backend, decentralized web hosting, obviously, and digital identity solutions building on internet identity. So a pretty broad range of potential uses. Very broad. The goal is to be a general-purpose compute platform. And what's it like for developers actually building this stuff? Is it easy to use? Definity has put a lot of effort here. It offers a serverless environment, supports popular languages like Rust and Python, alongside its own native language, Motoko. Motoko. Yeah, specifically designed for ICP for safety and efficiency in this canister environment. And there's a feature called orthogonal persistence. Orthogonal persistence? Sounds technical. It basically simplifies data management massively. Developers don't have to worry explicitly about saving and loading state. The platform handles persistence automatically. Ah, so less boilerplate code, more focus on the actual application logic. Exactly. It's designed to streamline building these complex, stateful, decentralized applications. Okay. So as we wrap up this deep dive then, looking back at ICP's journey, the tech, the hype, the crash, the ongoing development, what are the main takeaways? I think the journey really underscores some critical lessons for any big blockchain project. Mm -hmm. The absolute importance of transparent development, showing your work. Building in public. Yeah, and delivering genuinely user-friendly experiences right out of the gate, or as close as possible. Yeah. And finally, the need for adaptability, being able to evolve quickly based on feedback and market realities. The NNS upgrade mechanism helps there, but the whole project needs it. Absolutely. And it feels like ICP, despite the bumps, is still pushing towards that original promise, trying to take the internet back towards its more open, innovative, creative roots. That's the core vision of Web3, isn't it? An internet where applications are genuinely controlled by users and communities, not just a few powerful gatekeepers. Right. So to leave our listeners with something to think about. Okay. If entire social media platforms, financial systems, maybe even AI models can truly run end to end on a decentralized public network like ICP aims to be. Yeah. What other parts of our digital lives currently locked down by central authorities or big companies might be next? What could be completely reimagined with this kind of end to end decentralization? What stands out to you as the most exciting or maybe even disruptive possibility? 